Welcome to the car guys and welcome to this week's star car, the affordable and increasingly collectible Porsche 944 Turbo. If you watched my recent episode, 10 1980s cars that I would buy in a heartbeat, you will know that I featured the 944 Turbo in that list. And one person who certainly did notice that episode was friend of the car guys, Barry, who owns this car. If you like it so much, he said, come and drive mine. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. And as you can see, it's a real beauty, an immaculate December 1989 Turbo in Alpine white with factory exhaust, wheels, shocks and brakes. Surely one of the finest turbos in the country. Now I know that you are just as excited as I am to get behind the wheel of this pristine four-cylinder sports car and this week I'm going to take you through its history, exterior design, the interior, engine, special features and of course we're going to take it for a brisk drive so that I can try and convey my driving impressions for your viewing pleasure. So if that sounds like your special kind of 944 vodka, let's get on with it. The Porsche 944 was unveiled at the 1981 Frankfurt Motor Show, and it was based on the successful Le Mans Porsche 924 GTP prototype raced in 1981. Later on, the car became known as the 944 GTR Le Mans, the first car to wear the 944 badge, and it was driven by legends Jürgen Barth and Walter Roll. It finished seventh overall, and it was a full test of the four-cylinder engine that would soon be in the 944 road car. The Porsche 944 was the third Porsche model to feature a front-mounted engine and rear axle transmission, which later became known as the transaxle. An exterior design was overseen by head designer Anatoly Lapin, with the exterior design influenced by the wider-bodied 924 Carrera GT prototype from 1979. The 944 was in production in the 1980s and early 1990s and was actually one of the first cars in the world to be offered with both a driver and passenger airbag. And also an effective anti-lock braking system, ABS, was an option, further cementing the car's reputation for safety. After the first year of sales, the 944 accounted for more than 51% of total Porsche production. Launched in 1988, the 250 brake horsepower Turbo S was the rightful flagship of the 944 range, and Porsche made 1,635 of them with just 77 UK right-hand drive Turbo S models. From 1989, the standard Turbo got all the Turbo S improvements as standard, except for the MO30 suspension and the Club Sport wheels. Many believe, though, that those turbos, which this is, are the ones to have. By the time the 944 was retired in 1991, Porsche had produced over 168,000 of them, making it the most successful sports car in the company's history up until that time. Now, of course, it's been surpassed by the Cayman, the Boxster, the Macan and the KN. This Porsche 944 Turbo is a project car for owner Barry, and he's owned it for 12 years. During that time, he's replaced things like the fuel and brake lines, rebuilt the suspension, new sills, new paint, and given the car a performance upgrade and a sub five second 0-60 time. But uh, more of that later. Barry's car is a December 1989 MY90 example with a bridge spoiler. It's got black half leather and a cloth interior and it has a full service history. It's largely stock with just a few tasteful upgrades. Notably the MO30 Coney manually adjustable shock absorbers, performance upgrades to the engine, the wheels are the D90 16 inch style which are slightly bigger at the front than the standard ones. As you can see the 944 body is a lot more muscular than the 924, I've always liked it. To me it seems a more timeless shape, it's more chunky, it's more beefy, it more befits the fact that it's got a larger engine, it delivers more power and it goes faster. The 944s as I said in my 1980s video I've always had a hankering, I drove one in 19. 94 and I really enjoyed it. That one was a convertible but I have to say I think the turbo for me is the one to go for. I love the fact that we've obviously got pop-up headlights. I like the fact that you've got this aggressive body-coloured grille on the front and of course I absolutely love the turbo decal on the wing. Just one wing mind you. As you walk around the car you can see you've got black door handles, good old-fashioned nice chunky ones that are easy to open. You've got body-coloured wing mirrors and this car's actually optioned with a sunroof. 
fuel filler cap sits over on this side of the car. Around the back, you've got the Porsche decal, a lovely polished exhaust pipe, and of course, that huge glass rear tailgate with this black spoiler on it. The rear tailgate is released with an electronic button inside the cabin. You press that, and then this enormous piece of glass rises up on these gas struts and inside you've got the boot or trunk now it's pretty big but it is quite shallow and uh, you can fit a decent amount in you've also got this blind that you can pull across which is keeps everything in there private and also helps to keep it cool because of course inside there it is gonna cook my friend underneath the boot and the reason why it doesn't go down further is because you've got the spare wheel tucked away inside there. I love the fact that back of the car you've got that polished stainless steel exhaust pipe and of course the black turbo lettering and the Porsche decal. It just looks so deliciously retro but at the same time quite futuristic. I love the fact that the front and rear wheel arches protrude and bulge out of the car, giving it a meaner, lower stance. Overall then, I'm a huge fan of the shape of the 944. I think it's aged very well. It just feels very intrinsically right. This is the 944 Turbo's uprated 2.5 litre inline four cylinder turbocharged engine, codename M54 or M52, and it's a surprisingly smooth and refined power plant. When the Porsche 928 was launched in 1978, it was powered by an aluminium 4.5 litre V8 engine, the first time a Porsche had been fitted with a V8. When it was time for the 944 to replace the 924, Porsche effectively chopped the 928's V8 in half to create the 2.5 litre four-cylinder inline unit that replaced the VAG engine fitted in the 924. Power for the 944 Turbo is 250 brake horsepower at 6,000 RPM, up from the standard 944's 160, and it generates 250 foot-pounds of torque, which is 350 newton meters. The standard turbo takes about 5.7 seconds to get to 0 to 60, which is quick for the time, and surprisingly, even for today. Barry's car, though, has been slightly breathed on to give 311 brake horsepower instead of 250 and 480 newton meters of torque compared to 350. And that means it's now a sub five second car and good for a top speed of 175 miles an hour, which I will not be testing fully today. Oh. Now, as you'd expect, the cockpit is quite minimalist. It's quite austere and Germanic in here. This one is all black. You've got part cloth, part leather seats with the Porsche logo running through the center of them. Everything feels immediately right, driver focused. Everything falls to hand naturally. All the buttons are precise and have the perfect click or movement. Everything is well developed, gradually built upon over years of experience and it's pretty much perfect. You sit quite low in these seats. Ahead of you is that classic Porsche steering wheel with the horizontal bars on it and the horn in the center. It's a thing of beauty. It really should be in a museum of art. I am not a huge stature gentleman and I've obviously pushed the seat forward to get it just right, but it feels absolutely perfect. I've got the classic extremely fragile feeling stalks for the lights and the washers. They feel like they're going to snap in five minutes, but curiously, they don't. They seem to be made from the same material that makes the bones of Wolverine. Obviously, manual gearbox, five speeds and a reverse. It's pretty short and stubby, but of course, it's been honed through years of motorsport, so it works extremely well. This main transmission tunnel, I've got a uh, little button here to open up what is probably the shallowest tray. You've got just about enough room for a comb and that's about it. Little tiny ash tray here just next to it and then in this particular turbo you've got a line of buttons just ahead of the gear stick. One of them isn't even there so there's an option that wasn't ticked for this car. You've got the central locking, you've got the button for pulling in the wing mirrors, you have the rear screen, windscreen washer, you also have the sunroof activator here as well and the toggle for the leveling of the headlights. You also have the little red blinking light here which for the immobilizer, this car still has the factory immobilizer and it is one of those cool little layers late 80s, 90s immobilizer. You see, it's got a little chip in it. You put it inside a little socket and it makes a uh, noise. And that tells you then you're okay to, to start the car. 
To the right of the steering wheel on the dash, we've got buttons there for the fog lights. You've got buttons here to open the electric windows. They're surprisingly small, actually. The lever for opening the door is just here. And again, very small. It's quite dainty, actually. But of course, because it's Porsche, it works time and time again. I love the futurism of these vents as well, the way they're integrated and they just sweep through to the dashboard. Dashboard itself, uh, yeah, very futuristic. I'm loving this. Can you imagine picking up one of these in the 80s? It just must have been the coolest car to own. Even today, it still looks really fresh. I've got the temperature gauge over on the left, then the fuel gauge, then the mileometer showing you all the way up to 180 miles an hour on this, which this car, has been slightly fettled actually gets close to. This car's done 123,000 miles but is still running very sweetly. It's obviously been well maintained over its life. Then over to the right of the speedo we have the rev counter and also the turbo boost gauge within it. And then you have the oil pressure and the battery indicator. All the essential tools you need to understand how the car's doing, what the health of the car is and to make sure that you can drive with complete confidence. Any owner of Porsches will recognize these infernal climate control buttons here with these two sliders, which I have to confess, I have no idea how they operate. Even now, after I've had countless old 911s, I still have no idea what those two things do. But you do have the fan speed intensity and obviously the cold or hot indicator. And this car, thankfully today, has air conditioning. Looking like something from the Bauhaus era, in particular things made by Braun, this dashboard and the buttons here are just so Teutonic and super cool. Everything is jet black. We've got a hazard warning light button here, which is black. No, don't really see that at all. Normally hazard warning light buttons are red, but this one's black because this car's a proper goths car. You've then got the cigarette lighter there, secreted discreetly inside the dashboard. You've got a little digital clock, which is quite faded. And obviously here you twist to open up the glove box. Now this being the coolest 944 that you could buy in the 80s, you've got a 10 speaker sound system and we have two semi-useful rear seats. You could get people in there for short journeys or you could get your kids in there, but useful to have. And also you can access the luggage compartment from the back of them as well. So it is actually quite useful to use the rear seats for extra luggage space, in which case this is an incredibly practical car. Overall then, I have to say, I think the 944 cockpit is actually cooler than the 911. Even though it doesn't have those famous gauges and all that history, this to me, the way it's built, the way it looks, the touches of the design that the 911 doesn't really have, yeah, this, this is a cool car without a doubt. But now that's enough talking, folks. It's time to take this car for a drive. <laughs> manual handbrake down here just on my right arm all the way down to the floor and uh, off we go my first impression tacking some of these early corners is that the steering feels very precise it's, it's quite heavy very reassuring it's a really good perfect size and it just allows you to place the car and just judge the corners and how much input you need to put in the other thing you notice straight away is the gearbox that short stubby throw it's just perfect it falls right to my hand and the way you just snick snack through the gears it's got a sort of rubbery feel to it but again it feels pretty solid underneath so it just gives you so much confidence and it's a joy to change gears frankly immediately you feel like you're one with the machine and that's something that Porsche does very well because of course it's all been honed through years of racing that pedigree really does pay off for the road cars the engine is extremely refined it's smooth it's creamy it's very tractable and low speed ride is really good. There's something to be said for these transaxle cars. It's a good ride, it's firm, but it doesn't crash over the bumps. It's actually quite forgiving. Like all Porsches of the period, this 944 Turbo feels like it's hewn from granite. It's a solid car, it feels exceptionally well-engineered. This was a real sweet spot 
for Porsche. That late 80s, 90s, you know, they really did throw everything into quality control, spared no expense. Of course, it meant that the company almost went bust, but the cars you get in that period are exceptional. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of boost there. It's surprisingly nippy actually. I know Barry's car has got a bit extra horsepower, but yeah, when you stomp on that throttle, it really goes this thing. Oh, there we go, foot down. Oh yeah, you, you can really get a sense for when that turbo comes in. Let's see what the brakes are like. Brakes are pretty good. I mean, they're not, they're not fantastic, I have to say. Oh yeah, through there, oh yes. Very nice. Yes. Yes. I think the 944 Turbo and I are going to get on just fine, thank you very much. Considering this is like 1989, it really does feel modern. It's surprisingly usable and modern feeling. And this example, I mean, it's done 123,000 miles, but you would never know that. Everything in here feels like when you brought it out of the showroom. Oh, oh yes! Oh, that second gear, the second gear acceleration is divine, frankly. It's perfect for overtaking vehicles on B roads or A roads. I think what we're going to do now, my friends, is we're going to do a little bit of beans. So let's experience, let's see what the beans are like in this 944 Turbo. And for that, obviously, we go down to second gear. Are you ready? Feel the boost. Here it comes. Oh, it's third. Oh, yes. I mean, that is good. Perhaps not the most impressive beans that you can ever find. It doesn't rip your head off. And actually, there is a momentary lag where you wait for the turbo to spool up. But once it's on song, you get a real decent amount of burst of speed. Nothing by modern standards. Remember, even this car is sub five seconds, but not a lot sub. And that's a day. Once you're used to things like pistas and GT2 RSs, unbelievably, five second naught to sixties actually feel quite pedestrian. But it was enough to get the pulse racing. Oh, that gearbox, it just, honestly, just gets better and better. The more you use it, the more you get used to it. It's, it's just fabulous. Better, I think, than the gearbox in the 930. Better, I think, than the 968 even. I love watching the little boost dial flick up and down as you're on and off. There you go, that's the sunroof. So you open up the sunroof and it, it tilts back and all of a sudden some of the hot air in the cabin gets sucked out. It's not what I would call the wind in your hair experience and it is not something that I would compromise the rigidity of the shell for. So to me, if I'm going for a Porsche of this vintage, I'm definitely going sunroof delete. That's totally pointless. So I've had a great day so far in the 944 Turbo and the sort of things I've learned, as you pitch in to a corner and you want to power out, you've got to anticipate the boost, just press your foot just that little bit earlier than you're thinking and then just ride that wave of torque out of the corner just as the boost catches. It's quite addictive actually. This has got perfect 50-50 weight distribution, but I'm not sure I want to really test that hard on the corner. So I am being a bit cautious, but it's just fabulous. Pitch into a corner like that, and then you floor it on the exit. It's just a lovely sensation of boost as it catches. It's an addictive car, this. I am not convinced though that I truly want one. I am not sure whether the 944 Turbo actually is the way to go and whether I should probably stick with my gut instinct which is the 993 Turbo S. But the power, the balance and the amount of storage 
practicality of the 944 makes it a great Grand Tourer. Oh, look, oh, that is fantastic. You are sweeping along these B roads. It's just in its element, this car. It just feels so composed, so fun. And also, I found the air conditioning switch, so now I'm nice and cool as well, which is particularly good today. So what do I like about the 944 Turbo? Well, I like those chunky looks. I like the flared wheel arches, just how planted it looks on the road. I love the interior. I love this minimalism, and I love the dials and the feeling of this steering wheel. It just feels so right in here. The gearbox is awesome. How smooth the engine is, that is a real plus of this car. How practical it is, how much luggage you can get in it, how useful it is. This is easily a car that you could have on its own. You could just have the one car, and this does everything. I like how timeless the looks are. I like how robust and high quality everything is, how unbreakable everything is. What do I not like? Well, it's probably not fast enough for me. Overall, as lovely as the boost is, it's not quite fast enough for my tastes, but that is personal opinion. It feels like it's getting on a bit now, so it's a little bit creaky and a bit leaden to me when I'm driving it around and obviously the key thing you have to bear in mind with 944s is you have to buy the best possible car that you can. You have to have the service history ratified, you've got to make sure there isn't rust in any of the wings or the sills, you've really got to spend some time making sure that all the mechanicals are correct because there are potentially big bills ahead of you but if you can find that unicorn, that well-maintained 944 Turbo, then trust me folks, they are a fantastic buy. Not much money will secure you one of these, and yet the amount of fun that you can have, the amount of long distance touring, blasting along A and B roads, in fact when I get back home I might have a quick look through the classifieds just for my own amusement and see what sort of deals are available. It is a temptingly low amount of money gets you into a good 944 Turbo. You don't have to go for the Turbo S, it's only really one year anyway. But if you get one of the late turbos, yeah, to me that's that's where the smart money is. Overall, I have to say thank you to Barry for lending me this example. I know he loves it very much, and rightfully so as far as I'm concerned. Thanks for watching this episode, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what we're doing on the car guys please subscribe leave comments and likes there'll be another episode next week